been asked just to kind of fill out the overall picture of reform that's occurring at the moment and, and follow up from Don. I will take, take a little while because I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions and we'd, we'd really like to rather to actually to kind of deal with your specific um, questions. But um, TAFM is one part of a package of reforms. Um, and, and the two other packages I think are worth actually being aware of at the moment that we're going to reflect on what does this mean for the overall focus of the local government system and its ability to deliver sustainable outcomes. And the other two aspects I think we have to think about is Auckland. What does that not mean not just for Auckland but for the country as a whole and the system as a whole and the Resource Management Act reforms. What impact will they have on the overall structure of local government and its ability to do its business and meet community expectations? Uh, a couple of uh, uh, thoughts about thinking about Auckland. One, I think the current debate we've got reflects an historic debate about regionalism. Are we talking about regional government or are we simply talking about regional environment management? And you can see how that kind of debate has swung backwards and forwards um, over the years in terms of how Parliament has tried to deal with the governments of Auckland. And, um, and, and we'd like to reflect on what that might mean for the new settings, which we're, of course, learning about. Secondly, on Auckland, the, the Royal Commission, actually, I'd say, gave the government a relatively easy option. Uh, it said, look, here's our model. We've worked it out in detail. We've drafted, we, we pretty much drafted the new legislation and the appendix. We've even put out a time frame for how you might put it into practice. And by kind of building it around six local councils, it means you don't even have to find some new council buildings. So you could do it relatively seamlessly, relatively easily. But for a variety of reasons, which aren't actually at all clear to us, the government decided to dismiss the major findings and, and the major recommendations. And the best that perhaps we've managed to find out is that what the government didn't like, or at least certainly the minister didn't like, was the distance of uh, one large council, six kind of subsidiary councils from communities. And so if you look at the minister's uh, comments, look at the language, it's about the loss of local engagement. And he had a desire to try and ensure that, that citizens of Auckland would be able to engage with a local council and make a difference. And, uh, and as much as we can see, that is the major reason why the Commission's recommendations were passed by. However, the question is, um, what will these opportunities for enhanced engagement cost? And will there be actually, will this mean real engagement or not? And, 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 and I guess if that's a question being worked out right now. In terms of the process, uh, the reform of Auckland is built around the idea of three pieces of legislation. The first one is will be through, set up the, uh, the transitional authority, the board to oversee it. The second bill, it's currently, uh, very topically, possibly before, before cabinet today, deals with some of the really headline issues. The biggest headline issue, of course, is the future of Māori seats in Auckland. Will there be or won't there be? That's been discussed in this bill. Uh, the number of elected members, how big the council is going to be, how they are elected, and the, 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 the controversial question um, being debated at all levels on this debate is what about these local boards? How many are there going to be? Um, and what are they going to do? And, and are there functions going to be set in legislation? Now, one of the interesting challenges the government's got is trying to make some of these decisions in isolation of other decisions. So, for example, the government is committed to defining, to some degree, the functions of these local boards in legislation because it doesn't trust the new city of Auckland to actually devolve or delegate. Um, probably with, 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 with reason, actually, given the history of community boards and councils. However, paradoxically, I feel like we're going to start throwing that into this part of the conversation. Paradoxically, the ministers now also are separately saying, I'm going to define the poor services of councils. I haven't quite decided what they might be. They'll be libraries, of course, because as you know, the minister's um, mother won't talk to them if libraries are part of poor services. Um, uh, but we don't know what the rest will be. So in some sense, by December of this year, when the third bill goes through, which theoretically is going to, if you like, have the functions that these local boards are going to be doing, we'll have to have worked out what council's core services are going to be because we expect some kind of relationship between whatever functions they're going to have and whatever list of core services should, should that actually eventuate, uh, we're likely to see. But a couple of things about the, the Auckland model. Um, we spend a lot of time talking, is this a new model of local government? 
And my, my chief executive, Eugene Bowen, has totally convinced that this is a new model of local government. It's not a regional council, it's not a territorial council, it's something different. And we should actually prepare ourselves for this being spread out all over the country over the years. The minister himself has been a little more cautious, saying perhaps we should just see if Auckland works before we actually should spread it around the country. And I think we have to say we can fully agree with him on that one. Um, I, I tend to see it as a large Tasman, actually. Um, <laughs> But, you know, it's just, just a bit more cynical about these sorts of things. But if we, if we think about Auckland with the frame that we've got, it's a, it's a unitary council. That's what's proposed, at least. Uh, it's large. It's one point four million people. It's got a stronger mayor than, than the traditional weak mayor New Zealand model, but it's still not strong in the sense of a sort of a mayor of Chicago, you know, a strong US mayor. Um, so you'd have to say it's a stronger mayor. Um, Technically, we're talking about local boards with powers and responsibilities set in legislation. Still waiting to see what that might look like. Uh, a high level of corporatisation. Um, the government has always flagged that water and wastewater service will be corporatised. Uh, roading is proposed, to, transport is proposed to be corporatised. There have been suggestions that economic development, presuming the Minister allows the Council to do economic development, because that's one of the things he's actually said he's not so sure, and the officials have said we're not allowed to talk about economic development in its presence. Um, uh, if they're allowed to do economic development, that <coughs> might be corporatised as well. Um, and one of my feelings is, why would you want to actually be an elected member and stand for the new Auckland Council? Mm. What, what, what would you get to do? You can't actually do anything with water and wastewater because it's been um, put at arm's length. Uh, transport's been put at arm's length. Economic development's been maybe put at arm's length. I'm not sure what's going to happen to planning, but there were suggestions that might be put at arm's length. Beyond that, you won't be able to set the rates because you'll have to have a referendum, and you won't be able to decide what the council is going to do. You have to read for that referendum for that as well. So that's the negative side of these changes, perhaps, but the worst case scenario. Um, also, the, the Royal Commission recommended a kind of an interesting model of local government, which was much more integrated with central government, a much more joint up approach to dealing with social policies in particular, um, and a bottom up approach. You know, suggesting, for example, that the government should identify all its spending in Auckland and that that spending, in a sense, should be actually there to be overlooked, overseen by some locally based or, or, or integrated body of Auckland and, and national politicians and officials. The government dropped that, but it still kept the idea of a, a special Auckland social forum which was being worked on. But most of the details here are still to be seen, and we're waiting for the 4th of September to see the first tranche. But what is Auckland going to mean for the system as a whole? Um, as you say, the government has been very quick to say no assurance on, uh, on, on an outcome action um, in this term, and that would be sensible. I think they've got the staff. I've personally been amazed by the, by the way in which the idea of a super city has really caught people's imagination. And I can't, as I say, I can't really wait for a super grey mouth or super palms north. And, and most of these, I think, are somewhat contradictions in terms, but um, <laughs> I have to be honest that they've caught my members' imagination, actually. We've got mayors running around the country with grand ideas as we speak. Um, and, and I've been very careful, because one of those is my president, because he's actually launching his campaign on the Super Hawks Bay. Um, putting aside that he has actually mentioned the word super, but the whole notion of amalgamation, consolidation, is certainly back on the agenda at a local level. So I think Auckland has simply been a license for people to think again, um, you know, to raise that. And, and it is interesting, the time in which most of our research suggests that consolidation and amalgamation actually doesn't necessarily lead to efficiencies or greater uh, or more responsive democracy. You know. So that's, I think, another debate to be looked at all together. Um, and there are many, and, and there are some proposals of defences. So if you look at the Wellington, people driving a, a greater Wellington, are driving not because they think that democracy will be enhanced by all joining into one large council, but we need to do that to count, have a counterweight to the influence of Auckland. So it's that counterweight argument I think is always going to be driving. Although, you know, it just struck me that if you joined all the councils in the Wellington region together, guess what? You'd still have the third biggest council in New Zealand, which you've already got, so it probably may not that make much difference. Very quickly, a couple of slides and then um, time for some questions. The RMA is the other area which I think has got implications for the structure of local government and, and certainly phase two. And there's really only one area here which I think we need to talk about. And that's what the implication of the Environment Protection Agency might be. If we get totally stuck, we can pass our questions on to Jeff over in the corner there. He's done some study on this one. Um, we don't really know yet. This is uh, phase two. Um, it hasn't come before Parliament. Um, 